if you've been around on this channel, then you know that a big part of what I try to do with my play along lessons and other kinds of lessons is helping musicians to become more confident and consistent. So you know when to play, what to play and how to play and how to think about the music. <clears throat> and I do that with a lot of play along videos and a lot of really straightforward lessons with the instrument in hand. But I wanted to do this video around the holidays right now to talk about what I think is at the heart of becoming a better, more confident, more consistent and happier musician. Um, <clears throat> and bear in mind that, you know, I started playing the violin when I was five years old, Suzuki. Um, I joined a rock band when I was 16. After that, I was involved with a lot of different musical experiences. Um, that led me to become a jazz violinist and an eclectic player in a lot of situations and eventually to become a teacher and <clears throat> a versatile music industry entrepreneur. And so at this stage in my life, when I'm almost about to turn 50 years old, I've already gone through a lot of evolution as a musician. That doesn't mean I'm the world's greatest musician or even a great musician, but I think that I have a lot of perspective to share to a lot of musicians out there. Um, <clears throat> and what I'm really talking about right now is the fact that the journey of your musical practice is ultimately a journey in becoming a better friend to yourself. At the end of the day, <laughs> this is where it all heads. And so when you're playing music, you're facing fear, you're facing self-criticism, you're facing resistance of many kinds. You know, the resistance of feeling like, I just can't get this, or I just don't play fast enough, or I don't know theory. We have all kinds of psychological maneuvers that we go through, all kinds of highs and lows that we experience. I like to say that a lot of musicians, um, we go, you know, from these, um, the really, really high highs of delusions of grandeur, and we fall to these deep depths of despair where we feel insignificant and, and hopeless. <laughs> and, you know, the, the ultimate challenge, I think, and is, is to hold these two irreconcilable truths at the same time in a in kind of a balanced way to know that there's truth in both there's truth both in the fact that you are very powerful you you have something to say that's extremely soulful and intelligent and virtuosic and unique and beautiful and you know personal and also that music like the universe is infinite and that we are small in the face of that so I think that psychologically, a lot of us just struggle with this and it's really a, a mirror for how we feel about ourselves. It's about our own self-worth, self-image, self-esteem, whatever you want to call it. Um, and this is a lot of what I do in my coaching. When I work with, with um, people, I work with people in a holistic way. So if you're ever a part of my group classes, You'll see that I take you through a lot of exercises where we're really bringing this awareness to the front. Um, because with this awareness of accepting ourselves for who we are, that I feel actually helps us move through uh, to become better, more confident and happier musicians. But what I wanna do is I just wanna, without going too, further in, too much further into that, um, and of course, you know that you can find links to join the, ju the group classes. You can, you can work with me every week during my seven week cycles. They happen about every three months. We have one. You can always look for the next one and sign up, reach out to me, look for links below here. But what I want to do is talk about three, four, maybe five things that I feel with this, what I've just said as a backdrop that I think are actually going to help you reach these goals as a musician. Um, <clears throat> and this isn't everything, but these are things that have really been uh, resounding for me recently. And as I'm turned, about to turn 50. 
So I think one of the first ones I'm going to talk about, it may, it may not seem like the most obvious first choice, but it's something that I've been thinking a lot about. And I would say that it's about strengthening your relationships. If you think about the people that are close to you, parents, partners, ch children, siblings, co-workers, neighbors, roommates, we've all got relationships. And if you make a note about the things that you, that you personally can do to try to strengthen the relationships that you want to strengthen, that's something I've been thinking a lot about. And because I think as you start to work on strengthening relationships with other people, it's going to naturally bring up the question of your relationship with yourself. And also because I think that if you feel whole, if you feel supported, not only in relationships with other people, but in your relationship with yourself, especially, that this is what you need as a foundation to bring focus and effort to your practice. And especially in the places that's going to push you. I mean, the places you're going to feel resistant in that practice to growing past hard things, to making hard choices, to letting some things go in favor of focusing on other things, to being honest with yourself about what it means to you to be a musician, what, why you even want to do that, and what skills you want to focus on and, and what your voice is. So strengthening relationships. There's a podcast I'll link down here. I'll try to link down here to it in the description that I love that's called Relationships, Let's talk about it. It's by Prepo Teplitsky. If you just look it up on any podcast platform, it's called Relationships. Let's talk about it. It's really awesome. I recommend it. Um, <clears throat> of course, you can get counseling to work on relationships, or you can just listen to like a free podcast like that one. And you can just try to start to implement simple things to strengthen your relationships, bring attention to those relationships. So it's the second thing I want to talk about is physical health. And I shared this recently that um, I had a, um, what do you call it, a rotator cuff injury for like three months that set me back from playing quite a bit. Uh, and I was, I was really, I couldn't play very much for three months, but then I was also worried that I might be out for another six or need surgery. And I found this really miraculous thing called active release therapy also known as active release technique. And basically the way it works is they put pressure on certain triggered points and then you move your arm in certain directions while that pressure is happening and it releases a lot of the tension there. But the thing is that I've been to physical therapists, I've gotten cortisone shops, I've seen orthos. Um, I had tried a lot of things. And so if you're experiencing some kind of repetitive stress injuries, I just want to recommend this because I feel like a lot of people don't know about it. It's called active release therapy. You can just look that up online and find someone who's actually certified to provide it in your area. Sometimes those people will also be a chiropractor. I'm not big on chiropractors, so I wouldn't just go to a chiropractor, but I would go to someone who specializes in active release therapy. But there's a bigger piece here of um, your physical health. So what you know, what I think would be really good for you is to do some combination of, of yoga, or at least this is what I'm doing. I'm doing pretty regular yoga, and I also do other kinds of exercises, whether it's biking, whether it's running, swimming, whether it's just, you know, sports, you know, with my, with my kids or with friends. Um, and I feel that, that this is really important to have this physical health as a foundation to be able to bring that energy and, uh, and mobility to my practice and also to kind of have, um, to have clarity and some relaxation and be centered. So that's the second thing is your physical health. Um, third thing I want to talk about is <clears throat> that recently I organized my space, cleaned up, cleaned up the space where I do music, this space right here. Um, it was really a mess. And so these are all like self-care, right? This is all basically self-care. And I think that practice is essentially like 
it's partly self-care as well, self-development. But cleaning your space, taking time to unclutter. Um, I have some more notes here. I want to check them. <laughs> There's at least one other thing. Oh, <clears throat> I started getting up earlier. I started getting up earlier. And I did this in part because I wanted to strengthen the relationships in my own family. Um, and I thought if I were to synchronize my waking and sleeping hours, like with my kids, with my partner, that um, it would just bring us closer. But also I found that from getting up earlier by making that change, by making that commitment, that it brought something, it brought a certain kind of energy to my practice. So that's another thing. Um, here's something else. I started saying no to invitations. I started saying no to invitations that I wasn't like a quote unquote hell yes to. So if it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no. And I just started be, really being more protective of my boundaries. I find that when you practice, similarly, it's really important to be protective of your boundaries. So a lot of times you might go into your practice and you might just start practicing the same things that like some teacher from when you were a kid told you to practice. And it's also, it's almost like you're going on, you're giving away agency. You know, you're just kind of following blindly and just continuing to play solo Bach because that's what you've always done or like that same old warm up. And I find that those things, when we practice them, they take up our energy and they don't leave room for our energy to go into um, something very intentional, very intentional. Like if I want to work on a harmonic problem, I could be very intentional about dealing with that harmonic problem, a rhythmic problem, a phrasing, a vocabulary, whatever it might be, creativity. You know, when I practice, I want to be very intentional about here's a goal that I want. Here's an action plan that I'm going to try. I'm going to be honest and, and you know, listen back, try to get feedback however I can and and uh, and achieve that goal rather than practicing, just practicing stuff that I've always practiced, you know, because practicing stuff that you've always practiced with just this vague idea of getting better. It doesn't really, I find, help us grow as fast. So it's about setting boundaries. And another way to do that is to set boundaries in the rest of your life. Set boundaries around what you eat. Set boundaries about how much time you spend with somebody. If somebody calls you and they just want to talk and you don't want to talk more than five minutes, being able to say, I've only got five minutes. Um, and I'm just saying to say no to things that are, that you're not absolutely wanting to do same thing with gigs uh another thing i would say is make more money or save more money uh, i coach a lot of musicians on making money uh making time but you don't have to make more income you can spend less and that's a way to create more time for yourself um, and, and create space for yourself so a lot of times, if we don't have that foundation of resources, of financial security, of time management, then we don't have a foundation that we can bring this, this calm, the energy, the positivity that we can bring to our musical practice. So these are some ideas that I wanted to share today. Uh, of course, again, a lot of the stuff on this channel you're gonna find and it'll, it'll continue to be that way. It's going to be stuff with the instrument in hand, so I'll probably put something like that up again tomorrow so you can play along. But I wanted to share more of the behind the scenes. Again, this is a lot of the stuff that I work, work on with a lot of my coaching clients, whether they come to me as teachers, as amateur players, elite players who want to shift in some way, and or freelancers who want to grow in their business. These are the kinds of things that I... Um, bring to bear to help them get the results they want. So if you're ever interested, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, otherwise, thanks for being around the channel and I'll see you soon.